Hello, in this video we're going to look at the options that are available to you um, through the format menu in Google Sheets. So let's get started. Now, note that uh, for this demonstration I've added a column B here that's blank and we'll see um, why that is in a moment. But let's start with your format. Under here you'll notice that you have this series of things from font size through strike through and even a line. These are things um, that are basic text formatting, um, even if they're numbers, the way things are going to look. And I just want you to know that those, a lot of those things are available to you right through here. So this section of the toolbar really corresponds for the most part with this section of the drop down menu. Okay, so let's get started with some simple stuff and then we'll skip back um, to more data related stuff. So first of all there's a font size and you can pick a font size from here. Personally I would recommend using the drop down on the bar for one reason is that I can um, type in anything I want in there so if I don't see the choice that I, I like I can simply I can simply type in the one that I want and that'll that'll work for me. Okay Oop, format. You've also got your typical bold, italics, underline, and strike through. Bold, italics. There is no underline in this menu, and that's because we tend not to underline a lot of things due to the fact that it can be confused for hyperlinks. So in an Excel sheet, I, I don't see a lot of reason for, for using the underline function. It is available to you through the menu, but not through the toolbar. So let's take a look. We can bold this, or was bolded, I'm sorry. We can bold this, italicize it, strike through, change the font color. Let's pick something bright here. Yep, that's hard to read. And then um, you can also, and this is really available through the menu, but not in that same area, you can put a background color on there. This is also from the toolbar where you would get your borders if you wanted to turn those on. And uh, with borders, you can choose a different border color if you'd like. So you just go into that drop down and then into this one. So there's a red border. And this is also where you can change the uh, appearance of it to some extent. Okay, so all of those features available here. Uh, most of them available here. Now there's also an align feature. And you have two types of alignment. You have horizontal alignment. So this cell is currently aligned to the left. Let's uh, come into format and center that. And then also you have vertical alignment, top, middle, or bottom. So in this case, let me put it in the middle of the cell. So I could have put it way up here at the top, middle, or bottom. In a lot of cases, that doesn't seem relevant because the height of the rows really makes top middle or bottom a moot point but when you have taller rows it can it can be uh, an important an important feature okay there's also something called text wrapping and let's get into that i'm going to select this entire column and i will go to my text wrapping and right now it's set to overflow so let's see what that means if i were to grab and narrow this you'll notice that it does extend into that blank row or column rather B so it looks as if it's in A and B but if I click on A I see all the content there if I click on B there's nothing okay I can change that to say wrap and now when it runs out of room it'll drop to the next line Okay, so simply design choice. It's also making my rows taller, which may or may not be something that's okay with me. There's also something called clip. And clip hasn't deleted the content. It's simply hiding it from the adjacent row. So that's kind of, I guess, kind of a neat feature. Now, if I go back and I set this to overflow, Note that if I do put content into cell B2, even if it's just a space, then since this has content into it, it can no longer uh, overflow into that cell. 
So let me get rid of the column altogether since that's not something we really need. And I would probably handle this simply by um, dragging, dragging the column with to something that was appropriate. Okay, here we go. Um, there's also a, a merge cell option. So let's, um, let me insert a row above this and, and give it a funny title. This is my uh, okay, so a ridiculously long title. Let me just clean up some of that formatting. Okay, and you can see that it extends into the next three cells. If I actually wanted them to be one, I could select that. Um, go to format, I seem to be missing that, and say merge cells. And I have a couple of options whether I want to merge, depending on what's selected. Right now I only have three selected, so merge all will work just fine. And this now acts as a single cell. Um, from there, you have an unmerge option if you are in a merge cell. Now additional options, let me select, now I've selected a block, so I have um, both horizontal and vertical elements to that. And I could merge horizontally. And notice now it didn't make it one big cell because I said horizontally, it did it by row. It gave me a warning and it told me it was going to dump the content from the two cells to the right. Um, and I accepted that, but in a lot of cases, that would be a problem. You wouldn't want to lose that data. I'm just going to undo that now so you can see how it works. And I think I'll undo inserting that top row. And it will make me feel better if I can take that formatting off as well. Okay. Um, Conditional formatting and alternate uh, alternating colors. Let's come to conditional formatting, and let's take uh, let's say teams. So you can see that there were 13 teams, 16, 15, 13, and it looks like the numbers then go up. So let's pretend that we just want to point out or call attention to the cells that ha uh, or to the years that had more than say 16 teams. So I'm going to select that column. I'm going to format some conditional formatting and you can see that the range it's being applied to is G1 through G23. I could adjust this if I wanted to and right now it's only going to format things if the cell is not empty but if I look in here I have lots of options. Cell is empty, is not empty, uh, text contains meaning if the text had a certain word in it I could do that. Maybe we'll take a look at that a second in a minute, uh, does not contain, starts with, ends with, matches something exactly. Um, you can do it by date, and then you can do it by values, which is what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to say if it's greater than uh, 16, and I can take this default style, you can see that everything over 16 down here got highlighted. But I don't have to do that. I can say I want them bold. And I want the background color. Oh, I'm sorry, that's text. No. This is text color. Thank you. This should be cell color. There you go. A terrible combination. One more time. There you go. A little, little more legible. So that's, that's how you do um, that. Let's just say that I'm selecting this column and what I'm interested in conditional formatting. Once this is open, I can add a new rule. And I can see anything in there contains Italy. So I'm just interested in um, World Cups that were held in Italy, and there you go. You can see that there are two of them. 
Okay, that's conditional formatting. Um, lots of different options you can play around with there. There's also something called alternating colors. So if I click on that, it's basically a quick way to format this chart. And I can just pick one. So now I've got this green and blue and white combination. Or I can customize it myself. I can say I want that to be black, which means I'm going to have to change some colors there. I want color 1 to be white, which is fine. And I want color... No, let me make color 2... Um, there. Now note, if you do apply that, your conditional formatting will still override it, which makes sense, because the conditional formatting is applying to um, particular conditions within there, within the sheet. Okay, there's an option here for text rotation. So let me undo some of this formatting so that I can see what's going on. There you go. Um, formatting, and I'm going to come up here and select this top row formatting, text rotation, tilt up, tilt down, or I can put it at a particular angle. Okay, so I'm going to make them at 15 degrees, and you can see that they have a slight upward angle now. So you, you can play around with the different um, text rotations. Clear formatting simply takes away anything that you have on there. So if I selected everything with a control A, said clear formatting, that would take away um, at least my conditional formatting seems to have left my header color. So, Okay, the um, last thing that we want to look at in here is the first thing on the list, and these are options for formatting your content itself, and these are important. So let's come through and take a look. Um, see, we have average goals here, 3.9, 4.1, but this only says 4, and it really should say 4.0 so that it's a little more accurate. So I'm going to select that column, format number, and I can say here, make it as a number. It's going to automatically send it to two decimal places. Well, what if I only want one decimal place? You have that option up here to decrease the number of decimal places or to increase it. Other options you can get from the um, from this toolbar is to change something into a percentage. This is not a percentage, but see now it's 7,000%. Also, you could change it into currency very quickly from there. And you can use this drop-down to access the other um, formatting options and also to set it back to automatic, which is going to remove um, some of those features that I could put on here. Okay, under format, you can format it as plain text, as a number, meaning it will get two decimal places unless you adjust it, as a percentage, in scientific notation, in an accounting format, which is going to put negative, um, negative numbers, probably in parentheses, uh, may also format them as red or in a different color. Um, same with financial, just a variation. So accounting includes dollar sign, financial does not. I can set it as currency, which is a format that we would be, um, that the average person would be more likely comfortable with. You can also set it to currency rounded. That will not lose the uh, cent value in the data, but what it will do is it will display it in a rounded format and eliminate the um, parts that are less than a dollar. Various date formats, duration meaning um, how much time has passed, and then just so that you know there are under more formats there are more currency options, more date and time formats, and there's also this custom number format where you can build your your own particular format such as uh, for a zip code where you might need a leading zero, etc. Okay, that's a very quick tour through the formatting options that are available to you in Google Sheets.